Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Nice Thank you. Huh? <gasps> We're live. We are? We are. Hi. Hi, everybody. It's it's so funny that it says that we're live when it doesn't tell me that on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Super tricky. For those of you who have been watching along with us, you know that is a... Um, problem that we have each week. But anyway, this is not legal advice. I I'm Lee Daniel and I am the resident lawyer. And I brought this, um, this group of people together with my co-host Allison. Today we have Karen. And because I have so many people that ask me advice that is clearly not legal advice. And, and I have to say, I I do the best I can, but I'm not qualified to answer a lot of the questions, especially when it comes to children. I don't have children myself, so I wing it a lot. And I have to say that I do pretty good because I'll talk to a therapist later and they'll say, well, I would have said this. I said, well, that's what I said. <laughs> but we have uh, an expert here today. So Allison, you want to introduce yourself and then Karen, you'll go next. Go, Allie. Yeah. Sure, I'll put the phone down now. I'm all yours. I'm Ali Reiner. I am your Loved Again and Forever coach. And I work with women who are thinking about divorcing, trying to work out whether they still love their partner, whether the relationship still has a bit of life left in it. And together we, we come up with a, a plan of action to make sure you're 100% sure and then create the plan that takes you to where you want to be at the end of it. So that's in essence, that's what I do. Uh, why do I do that? because I was that woman who wanted to leave her husband. I was that woman who was using the kids as a, as a ploy, as a tool to, to win points against, yes, I know it's not nice. <laughs> it's not nice. I learned my lesson, uh, but I think it's, I didn't realize I was doing that. And I think that's one of the things that we'll, we'll touch on is we think we're doing the best we can for our kids because it feels like the best for us. We, you know, we go into it with the, the best of intentions. And it's not always what's best for the kids. And I learned that as I went on my journey. And that's why I do what I do. So welcome, everyone. And over to you, Karen. <laughs> this is well, Karen. Karen, introduce yourself, please. Yeah, so I'm Karen Monster, and I'm a child psychologist. And I've been working with, uh, with families, actually, for around 15 years now. And I, I don't specialize in divorce and parenting, but I do specialize in children and in, in, in the family structure, the family system, and what is best for them. And it's I in, in my view, it's a lot about that connection and that communication that you can really have in place when you're going through a divorce. You know, what are the things that are you should say? How do you connect to your children in a way that will ensure their transition? time <laughs> because it is a difficult time it's the worst, it's and, the worst and I, I um especially around the holidays and, and we've just done our holiday series but i the holidays are absolutely one of the worst times when it comes to having children and going through divorce because people want to have time with their children and for some reason they don't care as much about the other party having time and karen how I just listened to your videos and, and you say no, no shaming and blaming. No. That seems pretty self-evident to me because I was about to shame Allison. But tell me, <laughs> <laughs> what what is that? What is shaming and blaming as it comes to this whole situation? Well, as soon as you go into that space of blaming the other parent, uh, I mean, it was their fault. He did that. I was, you know, oh, what is he doing? And, you know, go, bringing children into a place of questioning their loyalty to mm. the other parent. That's, I mean, you should never question a child's loyalty to the other parent. It's their, it's their mother. It's their father. They're going to love them. And they, they want to be able to love the other person, the other parent as well, not only you. That is so important. If you go into that space and to the, you know, shaming the other parent, blaming, uh, it wasn't my fault, it was his fault, he did this, he did that. The child actually has nothing to do with it because that happened in a relationship and not within the, the parenting relationship, the, 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 that love-based relationship. The child had nothing to do with that. 
Yeah. And I, so, I agree. And I, yeah. I think, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, my parents were married, but my mother shared with me a lot of things about my father and, and some challenges that he had. And, and it really put me in a situation where, you know, she and I were together and then we were kind of opposite, you know, him. And, and I know she did the best she could. And, and back in the seventies, you know, there wasn't a lot of literature. Nobody really knew, but, but definitely Allison, do you see that? Do you see people talking to their children about their divorce? I see it more often than, than you would believe. And, and always from that place that I was talking about, not, there's nothing malicious and it's not maybe shaming and blaming as, as Karim describes it, but it's, it's more putting, you know, putting the kids, pitting the kids against each other, using the kids to score points against the other partner. So it's not directly shaming the parents, but it's, you know, you believe, and, I, and I'm saying that as someone that was in that position, I firmly believed that I was the better parent. And the reason I did the work on myself was I knew that I wasn't emotionally strong enough to go through the process and parent my children. Mm. You know, so I had to go and do some sort of work, apologies at school time, so they're all peeing and whatever. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you know, so I had to, to put myself into a place where I was strong enough to, to go through a divorce process or a separation process and still be able to, to nurture my children in a loving way because I, it was quite evident that I couldn't do that you know, and, uh, and do everything else. Uh, but yeah, I hear it a lot. I hear it, you know, and, and when I actually reflect that back to my clients, they're shocked because the intention is never, you know, <laughs> you're nodding. Yeah, you know, the intention is never to hurt. It's never to, to put the child. It's always done with the child's what we think is our child's best interest. Yeah. But it's not always. It's our best interest or our own thoughts on our best interests. Yeah. Well, what 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 Lee actually touched on was actually uh, what we call parentification. What's it called? Parentification. It's when you put when you're making. Um, a child into a parenting role. So you're, so let's say that the moment that I'm going I'm a mother and I'm sharing too much with my children, I'm putting my children in a position that they shouldn't be in. So I'm sharing actually a, a part of um, a responsibility. My emotional, uh, my emotional uh, health is dependent also on my children mm. and you should put your children in that position. <laughs> And so you're giving them a role that it's not theirs to have. They have they they need to be children and they need to have that relationship with both parents and not like, oh, I have to take care of mom now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't want that because you're then your child. I, I I was always in that position myself. I had a very close relationship with my father and, and not with my mother. So my father would share all his uh problems with me, not with my mom. <laughs> Yeah, so and they always in a very different role. In it the breaks family. my heart because you'll have. <laughs> it really does. It breaks my heart because I see so many. I, I was just telling Karen earlier that um, the very first thing that people need to do when they're contemplating divorce is really think about how it's going to impact their children. I mean, and Alan and I talked, we did divorce planning last week, but my gosh, how you're going to relate to your children is so important. And so, Karen, just like Allison said, pitting against, and because somebody came into me yesterday and said, they've been asking um, our daughters, who do you want to live with? Who do you want to live with? And these are eight, 10 year old kids, right? That happens all the time. What can you do? How, what, do you, what should you do instead, Karen? Well, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't ask the child. I mean, you have to stay the parent. You have to stay in that role of we are the parents. We chose to bring these human beings into this world and we have a certain responsibility for their well-being. And that should be the, the, the baseline of the communication between the parents. And they have to discuss that beforehand. You don't go with a child into such a, into such a conversation. What, what are you doing to a child? You're breaking, all the time. Their heart. You're breaking their heart. They don't want to choose. They, they, what they want is for you to stay <laughs> together. <laughs> so you cannot give them that choice because they know they're, you're again going into loyalty. And loyalty is something that you don't want to touch on. You ha they, they, they have to be able to say, we love both our parents mm -hmm. equally, if that is what they feel. <laughs> yeah. 
Right. Um, and, and, yeah. So you you discuss that beforehand. You decide that as parents, what how what is our situation? Who has, you know, the means, the time, the opportunity, etc. What can we do for our kids? And then you discuss it with them. You know? It's difficult. It's, it's a really difficult one, though. You know, a, the country that I live in has uh, has a, a law where the parents, if if both parents are mentally sane and normal and, and whatever, that the children should be shared equally. That's the, and that sounds great in theory. And I think we touched on it before. Yeah. But it's actually really, really disturbing for the children. They don't have a home base. They've got a home base for one week, and then the next week they're somewhere else. And yeah, you know, and it's really confusing for them. So although the, the intention is great, you know, to make sure that the parents, and this is this goes back to what's best for the parents, the parents don't lose. It's not best for the children. The children need to have, I think, need to have a base. And and then we, we organize it the best way we can to, to give them that sense of security, to give them that sense of, of stability in their life when everything else is, is so unstable. So it's, yeah. it's a really difficult, and especially, you know, the, when the divorce tends to mean that the parents aren't great friends, they're not, gonna, yeah. they're not sitting down, they're not having those conversations. No matter how much both parties adore their kids, it's difficult to, to find that common ground especially when the, the idea of not spending time, not waking up in the morning and seeing those little eyes smiling up at you or looking up at you breaks your heart. It, it does. But, and we do, we have moved, we're moving into uh, and have been over the last several years, joint custody. And, and I know, Allison, you, you disagree. You don't think it's the best thing. But for me, I, I represent you know, both men and women and lots of and I represent lots of fathers who up until this point have have been relegated to a standard visitation. And I'm a firm proponent of joint physical custody. And so that's because I really think that kids need both of their parents and they don't need um, maybe because of my own relation, you know, because I didn't have a close relationship with my father. So I love joint physical custody. I'm not the <laughs> child, but I think that it comes to the parents parenting effectively, yeah. right? I mean, because, you know, I think that the parents have to learn to co-parent effectively. Do you have any tips on that, Karen? I'm sure you have thousands of tips. Yeah. Uh, so I, um, I've been co-parenting with my uh, ex-partner for 18 years almost. And they're, it's, it's not, it's, it's, I mean, you have co, you have the joint custody and you have co-parenting and that, in, in, in that spectrum, there's a lot of possibilities on how you can create a, a right. good environment for the child. So we've been co-parenting, but I was the main place. I was the, 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 that comfort place where she had, you know, where she knew, okay, I come here for this and then I go there for that. But we, what we did, we did um, uh, twice a week. So it would, so she, she would go every Tuesday and every Friday, she would spend the night and, and, so there were no long stretches, a lot of communication. I just, you know, I, I was always about, I believe that she needs a father, not only a mother. I believe that I'm a daddy's girl. I'm such a daddy's girl to say to my, to, you know, like, I, no, you can't see him. It wasn't about me. And I, I, I really put myself out of that equ equation all the time. What, what, what does she need? What, what do they need in the relationship? Because it wasn't about me. It was about their relationship. And, and that is so important. How, so what do they need to, 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 to get together, you know? And, and in the first years, I was a student, so it wasn't easy. He had no money and things like that, you know? I, I would actually have to, like, give him some money so that he would buy food. <laughs> but I did that because it was so important that, that that continuity that she knew he was there and it was more important to me that they had a relationship than whatever he was doing with his life I don't I didn't you know I was like okay I'm hoping that he will create a good life for for himself because I want him her to be proud of him too but it wasn't about me it was about them and that's just that's I think that's just what we have to keep in mind when we're co-parenting what do they need as a for their relationship to be whole and good and that 
whatever happens in the long run, you never got in, you never got in between that relationship. <laughs> yeah. You know? and I have a case that I've got a trial in a few days and I talked with the lawyer yesterday and my client lives in another state and the baby and the mama live here, baby mm -hmm. mama. And they, and, and the other lawyer said, well, he lives in uh, Colorado. And I said, I'm well aware of where he lives. I had to say I got a little testy, but because she doesn't want him to have any visitation and the child is around two. And I said, there's no reason that child cannot visit with his dad, you know? And, and she said, but the mother doesn't want to be away from the child for that long. And it's exactly what you said. The mother doesn't want to be away from the child, yeah. Yeah. you know, but the, it's the mother and what, you know, and, and unfortunately, uh, especially in, and I'm sorry if you live in a small county in Alabama, but in the small <laughs> counties, they're, a, they're, they're a still more like, oh, the mother's the only one that can take care of the child. And this is, this was an older lawyer. And, and she was just acting like it was ridiculous that my client, the dad wanted to take a week with the child. Again, I got testy. <laughs> I, I love what you said that, you know, you were young and dads can take care of kids too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, again, I'm a daddy's girl and I, and my dad was, was a really, you know, he, 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 he stepped up for us always. I have a brother who's like a, like the most amazing dad. I, you know, I see a lot of really good fathers out there who just want that opportunity to step up. You know, it's always about the mothers and yes. Yeah. We, you know, we did give birth, etc. but we don't have that. It's, it's, so important for a child to feel loved by both parents and 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 also to see the example of that can take care of a child <laughs> i mean what are we teaching our children what are we teaching our our sons i think that's that's ridiculous i mean i i enforce that too you know i'm also the one that does the most things in my house but uh but when i'm out when i'm not here dad has to step up and he does right. it you know? Sure. Yeah. Allison, do you see people that as they go through or they're contemplating divorce, that a lot of the reason they don't is because they have a fear about losing their children or losing time with their children? I had a, a lady recently who stayed 25 years more than she really should have done for exactly that reason. She couldn't, she couldn't give herself over to the idea that her husband could parent as well as she could. Mm. or even at all I, you know and that's you know that's the problem and that's it's taking yourself out of the equation isn't it it's just taking yeah, yeah. It back. this has nothing to do with my relationship with you and I could see you know the whole way along I hated I hated Marco with a passion, a burning <laughs> passion. What? I hated Marco when I was in it but I could take a step back and I could see that actually as a father he was bloody good he Marco was, your husband Marco's my husband okay. sorry but I could see that and that was one of the reasons that I was in such difficulty was I knew that I couldn't leave the country because I couldn't take the kids away and I so you know but you can't you you can't do that to a man you can't do that to, to kids they need that they need to be able to spend time together they need to be able to muddle through and come up with their own relationship in the same way as I was going to have to muddle through and come up with mine it's it's just it's so important and it's so important i remember back in those days my son would say things like when i grow up i'm going to be a mum that's, <laughs> yeah, that, that's what he he wanted because he wanted to be able to to be in that place where he cherished the family and he kept that's everything. so cute yeah <laughs> Nothing. That's, that's one of the biggest impediments i see to people going through with their divorce is that yeah. they think they're going to ruin their kids lives i had a guy that came in yesterday morning and said we're about to ruin our kids lives and I said, and, and I, you know, had a conversation with him about what the family dynamic was like. And it sounds like the kids are miserable or he, they're miserable. The kids feel it. And so, Karen, what, what do you say about that? People that are staying married for the kids, yeah. even though they're not happy themselves. No, if, you, if, if, if that's the only reason, if that's really, you know, you've been through Allison's programs. <laughs> And you know this is the only thing that is keeping you married. Don't fool yourself one bit. Your children feel it. They know it. They they see it. 
it's and they take it on their skin and they take it on and you this is this is what you are teaching them about relationships <laughs> i mean you are their you know you're the, their biggest teacher so this is you're teaching them that this is how relationships work people that people are unhappy they stay together you know even though they're not they're not allowed to go through for their own happiness in life this is not a good place to be no. and 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 you know Allison said something that I want to touch on is she said that the other parent parents better and one thing I learned is that it's so important for them to learn that different is not better Good one. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah we all have different things that we find important and my child is so flexible <laughs> and so you know she she goes into different environments and she adapts quickly because every so she would be you know she would also go to her grandmother's house uh, and she was like a vegetarian more like a hippie type grandma and she would do different things there and she would do different things at her father's house and she would do different things at my house and we all had different values but that didn't mean that they were wrong but they were different and she is like a very aware, wise child now, almost 18. And she surprises me every time by her, by the, by her awareness level and how she can adapt quickly in different situations. So different is not wrong. It's just different. <laughs> yeah. And, and being, and so, and also another thing I hear is that, you know, if we get divorced, you know, the kids are going to hate me. And, and I know, and you work with lots of children and families. Um, do you think that the, the kid, I mean, tell me, tell me what you think. I mean, I, I just say, no, they're not because I don't know. <laughs> really. I, just, I mean, I don't know any real research or any, you know, I just say the kids are not going to hate you. The kids can feel it. The kids want you to be happy. The best thing for you to do is be happy. But what, what about that? Do you think, okay, well, Okay, first they're gonna hate you. I mean, maybe I don't know. Uh, it depends on how 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 well have you dealt with the situation. Uh -huh. Has there already been a lot of uh, malicious blaming and shaming going on? Has already. So so what are we starting with? <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Right? Good point. So so in that in that what what is our starting point? That's the first question you have to ask, and and then um, yes. They're, they're not going to be happy right away. You have already, you are touching on, on their foundation. But if you do, if you, if you are, if, if you're coming from that place of love and connection and, and, and relationship and putting yourself, you know, out of the equation and in all the conversations, then they will come around when they see that, Oh, mommy's happy. Daddy's happier, you know, and 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 oh, and I'm actually doing pretty okay right now. Yeah, and you have and to give them time for that. It's not. <laughs> it's not about like in a in, in a week. They're like, okay, we did all the we, we did all the conversations, <laughs> and and there's they still hate. Yeah, it's all about time. Time does heal in this. And so some people don't want their kids to feel any hurt, right? And and they're trying to protect their kids from feeling any any discomfort at all. And so they're willing to throw themselves on the altar and sacrifice their whole lives so their kids don't ever have to feel unhappy. And and I say, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, that the kids know that you're unhappy. Mm -hmm. They can feel that you're unhappy. And the best thing you can do for your children is to be a happy parent. And it doesn't necessarily mean happily married parent. No. Because if you're unhappy, um, and, and, and I have a lot of adult kids come in with their parents, you know, mm -hmm. and they'll say, I knew, you know, we knew they should have gotten divorced. I mean, yeah. and they always know, <laughs> yeah. you know, that these are, t these are grown parents coming in with their seven year old, you know, elderly yeah. parents who are now getting divorced going, oh, we knew they're, you know, why are you <laughs> waiting until you're 70? <laughs> That's so sad. I mean, come on. And you cannot protect your ki children from hurt ever. And you shouldn't want to. Shouldn't you shouldn't want, want to. to because it's part of life. If, yeah. if you wrap them up in cotton wool, what on earth are they going to be like as teens, as 20-somethings, as grown-ups, as adults in society? They won't be able to deal 
with real life, life on life's terms. That it, it, they need to feel the heart, whether it's in a divorce situation, whether it's you know feeling a, an exam at school, whether it's you know being bullied. I'm not saying you should be bullied, but you know whatever it is, they've got to find their own way to yeah. deal with with these things. <laughs> I don't say that's a good thing, but it happens. And what happens, you know, is we try and jump in and we try and protect and we try. And, and I'm saying that as yeah, as as an offender, I want <laughs> my kids to be absolutely, absolutely happy all the time. I don't want them to feel anything on their their own skin. But I need to take a step back and let it happen. Yeah. And I see, I you know, something that Karen was saying is Karine, sorry. Um, you know, it is not going to happen overnight, but for kids, it happens a damn sight faster than it does for us adults. Yeah. They get it so much faster if they're given the time to do it. And I say that again from my own experience of not having taken a step back and having taken a step back and watched, you know, watching the different reactions, give them time and they, they come around so much faster. They get their own, you know, they get grounded so much more quickly and they find their way. And we are still flailing around trying to find our, our way. And they're, you know, they're off leading the way. Yeah. <laughs> what it, can it, we do, Karen? What can we do? What can the parents do if they're in, in this initial stage to make, or even, even if they've been separated or divorced for a while, to make it easier on the kids? No shaming and blaming, but what other things can they do? Well, Again, put yourself, the first thing is put yourself out, out of the equation, you know, realize that, that, that there are more people in the relationship, you know, not only father, the, 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 the ex-partners, but also the children, they're part of that relationship as well. And that they have to really look into that spectrum of how can we ensure that that relationship is also healthy? You know, what, what, how would my you know, look, look, look back over, look forward 10 years or 20 years and, and, and look at your child. What has she learned? He learned about life and relationships because of the example that is being set right now, <laughs> you know, and how can you, oh my God, if that is, if that is the vision that is being created, how can you do what, what is the one thing that you can do right now to make sure that that connection is you know, restored or, or, or better or, or started, you know, because sometimes it's, it, they, the, 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 the doors have, have been shut completely. And how can you open that door again so that that child can get both parents, <laughs> you know, we, that male role model, that female role model, they're both necessary. And even, you know, even if it's not, um, look, I'm, and I'm talking about people who are mentally healthy, non-abusive, right? And even if they're a little bit mentally unstable, but not abusive, I mean, <laughs> I can't, you know? We yeah, all I feel like we're all a little mentally unstable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we all learn from differences, right? <laughs> we all right. learn from differences. But I do think it's just so important for you to, to teach your child, look, it didn't work out. But look at us. We're working at it. We're working at our lives, and 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 you know, even if your if your first decision of marriage was not the right one, you separate, you can still go ahead and build a new life and new happiness. And I think that's a great. <laughs> I think that that is the upside of divorce if you do it right. <laughs> I agree. I, I definitely agree. I mean, and Elson. Um, as far as, I mean, you said this so many times, it really starts with you, you know, it really starts with, you know, you're, you're being, you being healthy and then being able to communicate in a healthy way mm -hmm. with your kids, because if you are going to carry that anger and hate into your new life, yeah. that's when it's damaging to the kids. So what, Allison, what, what suggestion do you have to those? I know you work with women, to those women who have so much anger and hate and err, you know, that they, <laughs> that they just can't stand the thought of working with and co-parenting. Cause that's, I think the big problem yeah. is that you become so polarized with your spouse and, and especially in litigation, you know, this is my fault. This is part of what I do um, that they just don't want to co-parent. So what, what do you tell Allison when you're in the, with those women who are just 
I as think you know when, when you're in that when you're in the place that you first of all you need to feel that anger. We, we've touched on that before. Right, we can't right. Deny it. There's of course there's going to be anger. Of course there's going to be hurt. Of course there's going to be you know screaming, shouting, swearing, and whatever. And that that has to has to come out in order to heal. And I think that's something that we we get wrong. It's not something we're necessarily taught. We're taught that you know nice ladies like the three of us. <laughs> Express our heart, our anger, whatever. We keep it all in and we just move on. But you can, you have to get it out in order to, to make a decision to, to do what's right for you, in order to be able to step into that nice lady role, whatever you have to, to call it, and make a decision that you're, you're going to do the right thing for your kids, but also for yourself. Because, you know, I'm all about starting with you. What's right for you is then going to be right for your kids. And it's not ever going to be right for you to hold on to hatred, anger, yeah, and, and refuse to forgive, no matter what the other situation is, you know, no matter what your partner, male, female, whatever, has done, not forgiving and not moving on is never going to work for, for anybody. Not forgiving the only person or people that are going to lose out are you and the kids, not your partner. He's moved on, she's moved on. They're creating a new life for themselves. They don't know that you, you're not forgiven. They don't care. <laughs> because they're they're busy creating a life that's going to sustain themselves and and their time with their kids. So you know, working yourself, it comes down to that every single time. Working yourself, let the anger out. Understand what the anger's about. And understand what went wrong, what your part was, what you need to work on, and then do it. Do it. Actually, take the action. Do it, and yeah, and then move forward creating whatever you can, you know, swallowing your pride sometimes, like I had to, go back and have a conversation. See, how do we work this out for their good, for the better good? God, I'm really shouting today, jumping up and down. <laughs> yeah, and I've been but thinking it's... of some ideas for Karen, like some scripts or some samples, because that's one of the biggest things people seem to have trouble with is communicating while they're co-parenting, especially in the initial phases. They don't like the other person so much that they absolutely can't communicate about basic things like what the kids need for school, what they need. They, it's just, I mean, if you could just see the things that I, you know, that I, that I handle every day. So Karen, is there any, if you, let's just do a hypothetical. You absolutely detest more than anything in life, your ex and his new girlfriend or vice versa. And there they are showing up at your kid's ball game. What do you do to make that easy for your child? Yeah, <laughs> I have actually, I really have no idea because I've ne I'm not that person. I've never been that person. And, and it's for me, you know, it's like Ali said, I'm about that inner work and that forgiveness. And I, and I'm, I, I right away went into that space because of course the first years were not easy, it was right. easy but I was always that person that I'm like, I just want my child to be, proud also to have not only one good example but also another good example how can I support that yeah. you know how can I support that that's and always take yourself out of it you know kind of like I, I'm an energy person so I kind of like step out of that field of, of hate and resentment that's going on and go into that place of also like look I can I can say everything about this relationship everything that I can put it all there well but gave me this child right Deeply grateful for that. <laughs> I cannot unwind this relationship because otherwise I wouldn't have my daughter. <laughs> and that it just puts me in such another space, you know, of of being there. And and I grew in that relationship. I I I I knew what I wanted. I knew what I didn't want. I I became a mother. You know, it's so it's all about connecting to yourself from that space. So it's a lot of inner work. It's all it, 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 you can't you can't do that. Uh, by yourself you know you have to get help in that right. <laughs> you get to that place of, of actually like what's going on here why this the resentment is never a good place to be in and you know you didn't yeah. make you didn't make your children alone <laughs> right and so I, I think that and you said you didn't know the answer but actually you'd know the answer the answer is you got to just got you got to back up from that you feeling you got to back you have to center yourself you have to you reframe. Have, you have, if 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 you're if you're really being driven by anger, you have to get help. Yeah. Because you're not gonna get out of it by yourself. You know, your child, your 
it's not going to help your children. It's not going to help you in the future. You know, you you have to heal. You have to heal. Right. Yeah. And in the meantime, um, you you know, I, I, the judges always say this. You just need to do, in my in my opinion, do the best you can mm -hmm. to be civil and to yeah. and to think about, like you said, you're being a good you're being an example of whatever it is. If you're if there's a visitation exchange you know, not to be curt or hateful or call names or, or grab or, you know, I mean, I have just seen in, in ball fields, that's another one. The sporting field is the cause of more problems. <laughs> and I see uh, physical fights and yelling and, and, you know, kids being jerked and things being recorded. And, you know, that's not what a, a child wants when they go to their baseball game or, or, you know, they don't want to see their parents arguing over, who brought the right equipment? Somehow parents have got, I feel crazy even talking about it, but it is so <laughs> much part of what I do. Um, somehow they have to think about what example am I setting for my children when I do this? Yeah, yeah. How it, humiliating it is. I, for I, I, couldn't, I can't even go to that place. I'm like, oh my God, you just have to be going. <laughs> You're being, just realize, I mean, people say we're staying with the kids we're staying together for the kids, but look what example you're, you're, you know, you're being for your children about, about relationships and life and, and, you, and basic decency and values. Oh, <laughs> we've all been in that place. We've all been to that party or the dinner party or whatever, where there's the couple sniping at each other. And it's, and you're just, there. oh yeah, you're cringing listening to it, you know, I used to try and jump in the middle and, and do that. I don't know that anymore. That was, you know, try and make it all love. It isn't it nice? I mean, look at, you know. People yeah. please it, but it, it's so difficult to listen to. And if you're the child watching that sniping backwards and forwards, or you've got to watch it from a distance and you're aware that everyone else is watching it. And I was that child as well. You know, I think we, we all were. I was that child too. And it's it's just awful 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 it's so destroying yeah it's just I, I always say I, you know we can only be what, what we want our children to become right mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have to be that person and even if if my ex has been an idiot and showing up three hours late for the birthday parties and I've seen it all <laughs> I'm still not that mm -hmm. I am me and I was there and I'm being the loving parents and you know it's not like my child is not seeing it she sees it <laughs> but it's her opinion not mine she can be her person and form her opinion about her father i don't have to do that you know when she grows up she can make her decisions about the relationship she wants to have based on the relationship that he formed with her i don't have to come into that space i can only be me and be the good parent that I need that, you know, I or be the person that I am. <laughs> yeah. I suck sometimes too. You know, we all have our moments, but at least I'm honest about it and that this is me. And, you know, her dad is her dad. And she is aware enough to form her own opinion. Right. But you don't have to interfere in that by, you know, and, and she complains. And I just listen, and I'm like, and I say, I'm so sorry that you're going through that. And I'm so sorry, you know, and, and sometimes it's really bad. So she's really complaining from, eh. and I'm like, and I'm like, and I'm like, what do you want to hear from me? I cannot say that I'm sorry for, for, because that would mean that I would be sorry for you. I, and I love you and I'm so happy that I have you. So I can never be sorry that that relationship happened. And I'm, but I'm really, am sorry that that he is disappointing you or that you're going through this it's you know yeah and being the loving you said something about being the loving parent so if you're on the other side and you are trying to be you know you're trying to be civil you're trying to be nice and the other parent is really ugly to you um what do you do just Stay true, true to yourself, is, and this is one. Stay true to yourself, and that's yeah. you know you you remain the loving parent, you know because 
that trigger their trigger whatever they're doing that's maybe their name calling or maybe that whatever they're doing you just have to stay grounded in in you yeah in you yeah yeah it's not easy especially when they're really engaging you know if they're really you know they're and they're usually because they're they're in the bad and they they're defend they're going into the defensive mode and etc etc but at the same time it doesn't serve anyone because (laughs) it gets out of hand so quickly (laughs) it gets out of control so quickly you just you can't you can't go into that space (laughs) and we've had you know it's it's been 18 years so it's we've had a few situations that that where we just went into that space and 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 the, the feeling you get afterwards is just so bad you feel so you know you're like oh i shouldn't have gone there and can you really avoid it completely if the other person is really in attack mode i don't know i don't uh, know because we're all human and it hurts and they're right. going to be, and they know exactly where to hit you, exactly where it hurts. So can you totally avoid it to not go into that space? I mean, you could try the most, more, but I'm usually, I'm the crier. I start crying right away. <laughs> and then, and then the other person really backs off quickly because, you know, I really right away show my hurt because if you go in anger, Mm. The other person lashes back in anger. Mm. And anger is usually hurt. You know, you're deflecting, you're, you're, you're showing, you're overstepping my boundaries, and I'm going to lash out in her too. But I go right away go into crying. <laughs> and like, look, you're hurting me now. <laughs> and I can now go into hurting you back. But I don't want to go to that space. So, so if, you're, if you have a child, if you're in this place, either one mm-hmm. of these, either parent, um, and that's when it becomes really hard for the parents not to let this trickle off to the children. Mm-hmm. And more times the parent will say things like, I didn't say it to them directly, but they may have heard me on the phone. Mm-hmm. You know, you, <laughs> you, have to, you have to insulate your children from hearing the yelling, the screaming, the, you know, because, I mean, Karen, what... I mean, I know from experience from seeing this, but what kind of effect does it have on the children to be in the middle of that arguing and that, I mean, it's really energetic too, in the middle of that arguing and hate and anger, even if they don't, even if it's not directed at them, does that affect them? Of course. It's hate. It's anger. (laughs) If that's in your space and that is what you're, the vibe you're really, you know, you're feeling. And that's what what I've said at the beginning, you know, it's, they're they're forming their vision of what life is Mm. that that starts home (laughs) you know if this is what relationships are why the hell would i want one (laughs) if this is why what happens with children when they you know why would i you know i'm never going to have children i don't want to do that to them (laughs) i still have even now as an adult i still have attention that happens when my husband shouts at my kids it can't and it comes it goes all the way back to my mother and father fighting and of course my mum couldn't couldn't fight at my dad because he would leave he would get angry and he would leave so she would turn her anger to us so whenever my husband shouts at my kids normally because they've done something they didn't to be given a row for they don't care they brush it off and I have this anxiety because in my head he's shouting at me he can't get at me, so he's shouting at them. And it, it happens so quickly that I, I tense like this. And we're talking a long time down the line. So, yeah, it has an effect. It has a, a lifelong effect that most people, I'm lucky, I had Karine to, um, to te- talk me through this and to help me work through this. Most people don't have that. Most people have no idea that this subconscious reaction has got anything to do with, a, you know, with something so minor so many years ago yeah it's something that we that the three of us know and and we obviously we teach energy we know how this we you know we know how this affects people but i i I do believe that most parents who like allison said earlier would never do anything to hurt their children and when they're in this space of, of of hating the other parent they're not doing it to hurt their child but they are hurting their child and they don't realize the ramifications of 
of doing that arguing or talking about it with everybody else. The kids are around holding on. They don't know how that's, how that's hurting their children. And if you're, if you have a child that's hurting, Karen, I mean, first of all, you need to get them some help, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we don't, we have to get our help ourselves, but we have to, you know, just really validate the, the child's feelings too. You know, they're there. It's, it's what I talked about in the videos. We, we want to kind of like, uh, Alison touched on this also on us as, as, as the, the, the parents that we want to have to get it all out, but we also have to give the child that space of feeling hurt and being confused and, being their whole foundation is it's gone so all their pain is real too and we what we go into that space of wanting to fix it for them as quickly as we can and sometimes they just want they we just have to give them that space to actually feel it and it's true it sucks yes you're hurting it's all real it's it's that validation of their pain. If we just want to brush it away and say, look, oh, it's going to be okay. What are, what are we doing? What's, what's happening in their system? Let's get stored in their system. Mm -hmm. So are my, my feelings are not valid. So I'm a person with feelings that nobody wants to listen to. <laughs> you know, we're all forming our realities through the subconscious beliefs and these are the crucial moments in life, the moments of pain. Mm. Those are the moments when we have to actually give space to letting everything come out and be. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I, I see I see children sometimes that develop eating disorders or cutting or and these are children who've been living in a home where there's a lot of fighting and anxiety and depression and and so the kids or it's coming out physically. Maybe they're not, oh, they're doing fine in school. Oh, but they're cutting at home. You know, yeah. they're, they're going to, they're going to express it. They're going to, express yeah, they're going to express it. And, you know, like cutting and uh, things like that. Uh, uh, eating disorders is about control, right? And if you can't control, you couldn't control the situation at home. You get, you did, there was no validation for your feelings. You, there was no space for you in the equation the whole this is the only thing you can control your body so yeah they're gonna, it's gonna show up somewhere mm -hmm. <laughs> so you better make sure that you know that you're being you know it's it's, it's a lot of pressure on parents I, I get that when we're going into oh my god this can happen um but th that means also that there's something you can do about it <laughs> right i think on the other side of the scale though you know yes we can hurt our children, but we, as long as you're doing it from the, you know, from yeah. the best place possible, as long as you're doing it with love, you know, you can't go too far wrong. We're all going to make mistakes. We can <laughs> for, you know, for 24 hours, we're never going to get it perfectly. We're going to make huge mistakes. We're going to damage our kids one way or another, meaning to uh, <laughs> forgive ourselves. But yeah. Do it from a place of, you know, if, if we're trying to do it with love. And yeah. if, as Karine said earlier, we're prepared to throw our hands up and say, I'm not perfect. Yeah. I'm doing the best I can. I am making mistakes. I will make mistakes. So will you. That's, that's yeah. what humans yeah. all about. Yeah, that, for me, that's that's the biggest lesson that I've I've been able to teach myself that I've been able to pass on to my kids whether they take it or not it's another matter but I've learned a lot from from being able to be that parent that says I'm not really good at this sometimes <laughs> I make mistakes sometimes I get it really right but you know I'm trying and that's you know that's the best I can offer you and even yeah you know, even in those delicate situations even in those the, the where everything else is up in the air to still be able to stick to yourself and still to be able to say I am trying my best <laughs> if it's hurting you it's not my intention. How can you know? How can we make that better for you? And I saw a question earlier from um, from Sarah, and she was asking. She says her son's really frustrated at the moment with her ex husband. What advice can we give her to pass on to him to make it easier? And I think you touched on that, um, Karine, earlier. I don't know if you get anything else to add to it. Is there is there anything else we can tell Sarah to to help her? to help her so they're already divorced i don't know she didn't say she didn't say but uh, I, I just either just, i separated or divorced and the message is to pass on to 
to the son who is frustrated with her ex. So yes, they're separated at least. Um, I guess we would need to know, you know, how old the child is yeah. and what's there's going a lot, on. There's a lot, you know, like what, what's the situation? Uh, what, why is it, why, what is the frustration? What is, what are the, uh, what is the relationship like right now? Uh, is there a relationship in place or is it something that, you know, okay, there's frustration. Why is the frustration? There? You know, there's so many questions that, <laughs> that need to be addressed. Yeah, to me being would, the psychologist. Uh, yeah. like, uh, <laughs> and I would say, just listen, I would say, listen, like Karen said earlier, listen to the child, um, honor the feelings, let the child express them, but don't get caught, don't get into the point where you're also complaining or you're sharing your own frustrations or you're, um, you're going, oh yeah, your dad's a son of a bitch or <laughs> not say that? anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, that's my take. Yeah. That yeah. It, and I mean, what, what, what is the frustration what so what does this child actually want mm. because what frustration means his needs are not being met so what does he want what is missing for him in the relationship with his father and how can both parties contribute so that his frustrations is is it what's possible <laughs> you know so frustration means that his needs are not being met mm. Yeah. What are they? Yeah. Are they clear? What would he want? Why isn't he getting it? <laughs> you know, those are the questions that need to be asked. Mm. And and I and so and what Allison said earlier, you know, whatever wherever you are, whatever stage you're in, if you if, if you feel like if we've said something and you're like, oh shit, I've done. I said now I'm pressing in such shit. Anyway, and you're saying, <laughs> I sorry, and said, oh I did that or I did that or I'm a bad parent. We're we're just we're just talking generally, and you know we know that that mistakes can be made, but that doesn't mean that you can't. If you're watching this and you know that you've done some of these behaviors then you can change that. I mean, you can decide from this moment on that even though you may have done those things in the past, that you're, you're going to change. You're going you're gonna to create a space for your child, even if you're in at odds with your ex or, you know, your current spouse. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say one thing. Children are so forgiving because they really want, you know, they, they want you to be happy and they, you know, they, if you just own up to it to them, people are really afraid to say I'm sorry to their own children or to actually address their mistakes because they were, oh, their child would think they're not perfect. But I think there's so much growth when you actually uh, open up in your vulnerability and say to your child, I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes and I'm, really, I, and I'm so sorry that, I've been, that you've hurt, been hurt through that. And just, you know, children, they go like, they're relieved they're like oh my god one they're not perfect so you're not perfect so they don't have to be mm -hmm. great relief for a lot of children but also you're willing to to work through it with them so that means you love them yeah mm, they, they, go, they go into that space and like oh my god she gets it she understands me now she has listened he, he, she has listened. Right. And now, and now we're going to work on that. You know, a child's heart just kind of like, kind of looks like, oh, thank God. <laughs> so it's never too late because even, even if you're, in that, and even it's been going on for years, that opening, that moment of, a child feels that. Mm -hmm. You can. I feel really, I mean, I, I hope that, I mean, for me, I feel a little emotional because I do, I sit at the front, I am, a little, I feel I sit at the front lines and yeah, I know what it does and I, you know, to parents, to children. And I really hope that this helps. You know, I really hope that, that listening and now Karen's starting to cry. But yeah, I, I know, we're, we're uh, like, are we all going to be doing this now? <laughs> I know, how much, I know how much you parents love, the parents love the children and, um, yeah. you know, I'm really hoping that this helps and, um, yeah. you know, I'll be sharing Karen with everybody that I can possibly think of because 
the kids need help. You know, you may think your life is falling apart, but they also are going through, you know, they're going through it with you and they, you know, we have to learn to validate their feelings and to think about them as well. And not just, you know, you're thinking about yourself and you're thinking about all the things you're going through. How is this affecting, you know, you need to take care of you. You need to take care of you, you know. And you need and, to forgive you as well. That's, you know, yeah. that's the thing. We, we only, we can only perform with the information we have. We can right. only do what we know. So if, you know, what you were saying yeah. earlier, Lee, if you're sitting watching this and you're thinking, shit, I've done that, 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 you didn't know any better. You yeah. didn't know that you could do it differently. And I had to, I had to work through that with myself. I look back at some of the things I said and did, and I'm not proud. But I didn't know that there was a different way. Yeah. Now I don't have that excuse. I know there's a different way. Now it's bad behavior. And now I keep my own ass. <laughs> but, you know, I had to forgive myself for what I didn't know so that I could grow and be able to do it differently and be able to, you know, be able to come here and, and say, I fucked up. Sorry, I need. <laughs> That's an even bigger word. We are cursing a lot today. Yeah. I hope we don't get struggle. <laughs> This is not the FCC, is it the federal, <laughs> yeah, the FBC, whatever. Anyway, so ladies, it's been an hour, and um, Allison, you want to tell people how they can find you? You can find me on my website, alisonreiner.com, or come over and join my Facebook group, which is uh, Love is an Inside Job. <sighs> um, or you can email me at alison at alisonreiner.com, easy peasy. Or find me here, of course, on PPC. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging around on PPC. <laughs> Karen? Yes, so I'm here on PPC too. I'm a proud member of this amazing movement that Lee has started. Oh, thank and you. Can, yes, I, it's, it's amazing. And I'm also, you can find me, find me uh, also on Facebook, uh, my group, uh, Highly Sensitive Parents. You can find me there. I'm there daily. And I'm also at the www.thevibrantsensitive.com. Wow. And you can email me. KarenMonster at gmail.com. I make it really easy. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and I, of course, am Lee. And you can find me at um, my law office, LeeDaniel.com. Um, is that right? No, it's not even right. <laughs> LeeDanielLaw.com. But anyway, we're on Project Positive Change. So thank you so much, Karen This is, and Allison. This has really been a really hard um, but really important conversation. And so we'll have Karen back, everybody, to visit with us again soon. So you guys have a great week. Great week. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone.